Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the introduction. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. I uh, would like to present to you a uh, calibration procedure for wideband time domain uh, characterization of nonlinear devices. <coughs> Uh, first, I will uh, present the work motivation. After that, I will uh, focus on the time domain measurement system. Uh, this uh, measurement system is realized that uh, in our laboratory, Exlim. Uh, in the next, uh, I will uh, present uh, the proposed high-resolution wideband uh, calibration uh, procedure. And in the last part, I will uh, uh, present the validation of the proposed calibration and uh, show uh, some uh, calibrated uh, results uh, under. Uh, uh, pulsed excitation. And finally, I will uh, co uh, give some conclusions. Uh, Nonlinear devices uh, used in communication and uh, radar uh, systems uh, produce uh, <coughs> uh, envelope uh, distortion and uh, carrier uh, distortion. Uh, these distortions uh, uh, comes of uh, globally from nonlinearity and the uh, memory effects in uh, nonlinear devices. So uh, these uh, nonlinear devices excited by uh, modulated and uh, uh, wideband modulated or uh, pulse signals uh, uh, produce a complex uh, spectral components, uh, including DC, uh, low frequency, and multiple uh, harmonics. So to accurately characterize, characterize nonlinear devices, uh, a time domain um, calibrated measurement system could be able to retrieve uh, all the information over the bandwidth. The problematic of time domain measurement system is, is a calibration for wide, wide band time domain measurements. First, uh, overall, uh, we can, uh, there are two main uh, operating principles of time domain measurement systems. The first transfer is the frequency uh, sweeping uh, used in mixer-based uh, systems, such as uh, MVNA. Uh, these systems are able to uh, measure uh, time domain waveforms with limited uh, calibrated bandwidths around the carrier and multiple frequencies. The other operating principle is the time domain sampling, which can be a direct sampling or a subsampling. Real-time oscilloscopes uh, use the, the direct sampling principle. The systems are uh, limited in uh, dynamic range uh, due to the trade-off between uh, sampling uh, speed and uh, dynamic. Uh, the other uh, operates, uh, operating principle, uh, uh, which is the subsampling, uh, <coughs> is used in triggered sequential equivalent time oscilloscope. Uh, these systems uh, can achieve a high dynamic range, but they, they are limited in memory depth due to problems related to the use of a trigger. Other systems working with the subsampling principle are the coherent equivalent time oscilloscopes. The systems uh, can achieve a high dynamic range, and uh, also we can achieve a, a high equivalent sampling frequencies. <coughs> the problematic is the required the calibration uh, procedure for all these systems. These slides describe uh, the four-channel uh, proposed THA-based measurement system. Uh, this is a measurement system realized at Xtreme. Uh, this system is based on the use of four uh, THA uh, receivers, uh, sharing the same uh, clock uh, with an analog to digital converter to the directly digitize RF uh, periodic signals. Uh, this uh, system working with uh, sam uh, coherent uh, sampling uh, principle and uh, uh, can achieve high uh, sampling, uh, equivalent sampling, uh, equivalent uh, frequencies. Mm -hmm. The coherent sampling uh, principle uh, has already presented in a previous RFT uh, conference. Uh, the main idea is to reduce the acquisition time uh, while maintaining a constant uh, real sampling uh, frequency and to achieve the high uh, equivalent sampling frequencies rates. Uh, uh, so with, uh, with this principle, the acquired uh, samples are scrambled. Uh, to visualize the time domain signal, a reordering process is uh, needed uh, uh, once the acquisition is terminated. We show also time, uh, power characteristics of the time domain measurement systems. We have a 70 dB dynamic range over a 30 gigahertz uh, bandwidth. 
So to calibrate this system, a normal calibration procedure used in VNA can be used. Uh, this cal calibration uh, consists in determining the error coefficients uh, uh, for, uh, in this case, it's for uh, carrier and harmonic uh, frequencies. So the number of co frequency component is limited uh, to the number of harmonic to take it into account. Uh, it's, uh, co uh, we have to two steps for this uh, calibration. We have the relative uh, calibration, uh, which is a uh, salt uh, calibration as used in BNA. Uh, which is just to connect short open loop to port one and then port two and establishing a through connection between them. The second step is the absolute calibration, which is to determine the uh, complex error coefficient. Uh, we use a power meter for the amplitude and uh, an harmonic phase reference uh, to determine the phase. This uh, calibration is dedicated for CW measurements, but can also be used for wideband measurements. But to apply this calibration for wideband measurement, uh, uh, we should assume that uh, the system has a constant group delay in the bandwidth. So we, uh, we, con we, uh, we consider that the error coefficients uh, has constant values uh, in a bandwidth VW around carrier and uh, harmonic. So this assumption will induce some errors in the time domain uh, uh, measured waveforms. To overcome this problem, we propose a wideband uh, calibration procedure based on the use of a multi-sign uh, signal generator and also multi-sign uh, amplitude and phase reference. Uh, in our case, to uh, ensure that we respect the dynamic range of the system, uh, we generate the multi-sign signal as a sum of sinusoids with constant amplitude and variable Schroeder phases. Uh, considering these parameters, we are able to calibrate 300,000 uh, frequency components over one or uh, multiple frequency bandwidths. As a matter of example, a 10 kilohertz uh, resolution is reachable over a 3 gigahertz bandwidth, or uh, for example, uh, 100 kilohertz over a 30 gigahertz bandwidth. Here is an example of a numerically generated multi-sign signal. This signal is generated in the bandwidth between 0.6 and 4.2 gigahertz with a resolution of 100 kilohertz. Uh, phases uh, of the sinusoids are calculated using the Schroeder algorithm. Uh, the use of the Schroeder algorithm were, uh, with, the, with this uh, phase distribution, uh, we can uh, uh, reduce the dynamic of the time domain uh, multi-sign signal. After that, this signal is uh, converted from digital to analog uh, domain uh, using an, a, an arbitrary waveform generator. Okay. Now the application of this uh, new wideband calibration on the measurement system involves uh, always two, two steps. The first step is a relative calibration, salt calibration using the multi-sign uh, signal. But with this calibration procedure, as all the frequencies are generated and measured simultaneously, so a single measurement uh, is made for each standard uh, to uh, extract the error coefficients uh, for all the frequency components. That will uh, greatly reduce the calibration time compared to uh, frequency sweeping measurement uh, systems. The second step is the absolute calibration using the multi-sign signal. Uh, here is a measurement set up for this uh, step uh, calibration. Uh, we use always a multi-sign signal uh, as used in relative calibration. Uh, this signal is now measured uh, using a calibrated oscilloscope. After that, the uh, acquired signal is uh, processed to the embed uh, the effect of the attenuator used between uh, input and uh, reference uh, planes. Now to validate this wideband uh, calibration, uh, we, uh, we perform two uh, different calibrations uh, and comp uh, compare them. The first case, uh, case A, it uh, consists in an harmonic calibration with the assumption of a constant group delay. Uh, case B, a wideband uh, high resolution calibration is performed. To show the difference between the two calibration, this figure presents the amplitude of the comp absolute error coefficient. Uh, 
uh, for the two calibrations, we can uh, observe a uh, significant difference between uh, uh, the two uh, coefficients for the two calibrations. This uh, difference will uh, induce uh, errors in uh, measured in the uh, measured waveforms. So to uh, to observe uh, this, the influence of the calibration on the measured time domain waveforms, a uh, measurement in uh, through connection uh, is ma is made uh, with a pulsed uh, excitation. Uh, <coughs> The measured waveforms and through connection uh, uh, shows that this kind of uh, calibration is not sufficient for accurate, uh, accurate uh, uh, time uh, domain uh, measurements. Uh, we can observe a group delay between uh, incident uh, and uh, transmitted uh, voltage waves. Also, uh, transition uh, distortion at the beginning and the end of the pulse is also observed. Uh, now, uh, in case B, uh, the measurement system is uh, calibrated uh, using the proposed wideband calibration. We can show a very good coherence between incident and transmitted voltage waves. Also, the rising and falling edge are uh, clearly observed uh, without any distortion. Uh, that's we uh, validate uh, this uh, calibration uh, procedure. Now to uh, to show the accuracy of the measurement system in uh, as parameters uh, measurement of a passive component, we made the as parameters measurement of a bond pass uh, filter using the multi sign signal in a bandwidth between uh, 1.6, uh, in a bandwidth of 1.6 gigahertz and a resolution of 1 megahertz. Uh, we compare uh, as parameter measurement between uh, VNA and uh, the proposed uh, THA based system. We observe a very good uh, coherence between, uh, between them. Also, we make a uh, time domain characterization under pulsed excitation for the passive component. Uh, the wideband calibrated measurements uh, are measured uh, at a high equivalent sampling frequency of uh, 126 giga sample per second. Also, we make uh, a transient simulation uh, of the, the same component. Uh, the comparison between uh, transient simulation and uh, wideband uh, calibrated measurements uh, shows also a very good uh, coherence. Uh, that's uh, validate the uh, calibrated uh, accuracy of the calibrated measurement system uh, for uh, uh, the characterization of passive component. And now to show the Characterization of uh, for a nonlinear devices, we have uh, characterized a GAN 40 watt high power amplifier under pulse signal uh, excitation. Uh, there is the uh, input uh, voltage and uh, current uh, waveforms measured at the saturation point. Uh, this, uh, these waveforms are measured at uh, an equivalent sampling frequency of 60 giga sample per second. Uh, similarly, we uh, show the calibrated uh, output voltage and current uh, waveforms. Uh, these measurements depict the presence of uh, harmonics inside the pulse. Also rising and uh, falling uh, transition are uh, clearly observed. This kind of measurements are greatly uh, useful to uh, modelize and uh, characterize memory effects in nonlinear devices. And finally, to conclude, we have uh, proposed a uh, wideband uh, high resolution calibration uh, procedure. Using this procedure, uh, a 10 kilohertz resolution is reachable over a 3 gigahertz uh, bandwidth. The fully calibrated measurement system using this procedure uh, allows an accurate measurement of transient uh, responses at uh, high sampling rates. Thank you. <laughs>